everyone, thank you so much for watching the Multicultural Channel Community Hour. My name is Fernanda Vallejo and today we're going to talk about Seed Winnipeg. Seed is dedicated to build stronger communities and works to reduce the poverty by creating opportunities to different financial programs. Today I have two special guests, two dedicated workers from Seed Winnipeg. Her name is Farhas. I'm Priscilla. Welcome, ladies. How are you doing today? We are very excited. Thank you for having us. You're more than welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about you, just a short bio? Uh, my full name is Farah Nazafab, and I'm originally from Afghanistan. I came to Canada as a refugee in 2018. Um, and prior to joining SEED, I started working at a financial institution for many years as a financial advisor. And then I joined Seat Winnipeg last year uh, in June. So I passed my first year anniversary at Seat Winnipeg, which I'm very happy to be part of helping uh, internationally educated professions and skilled immigrants to succeed and go to the path of career they look uh, for term. Congratulations. I'm sure that you're doing a great job with Seat. And they'll be happy to have you there. <laughs> Thank you. We are. <laughs> you are. How about you, Priscilla? Thank you, Fernanda. My name is Priscilla Calderon. I'm from Ecuador. I immigrated to Canada almost seven years ago. Okay. I am a former participant of Seed Winnipeg, and I am a business consultant right now for uh, two years already. I am a business owner. I run my uh, flooring company here in our city, Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, I am a facilitator as I'm a business consultant in our programs. I'm happy to share some of our experience with our participants. Awesome. Sounds great. So, Sid, talking about Sid, we're going to discuss today about two main topics, the recognition program and building a, a business here in Canada. So, Farhnas, can you tell me what inspired Sid Winnipeg to create this program, the recognition program? By the way, sure, Fernanda. Thank you so much for asking that question. So I'll take you a little bit back in the history, 2009. So what happens in 2009? The government of Canada, I believe, they do this uh, study trying to find out what happens when a skilled immigrants enter Canada. <laughs> so they found out that once international educated professions or skilled immigrants enter Canada they are unable to find a job in their field of expertise oh, oh. Um, due to not having their license being recognized in Canada, unfortunately. So that is when the federal government through ESDC, which is short for um, Employment Social Development Canada, um, they, uh, their department uh, published a pan-Canadian framework. And pan-Canadian framework represents uh, federal, provincial, and territorial. They all uh, come together in order to come up uh, with ideas, assessments, ways to internationally educated professions so they can get in their field of expertise. And that's where the uh, federal government also supported and uh, uh, investing certain amount of money as well as energy and um, they reached out to different organizations. SEEP was one of them that in 2012, we launched Recognition Counts program, and that's where uh, we started looking, helping international educated professions to get the credentials recognized. We provide financial support as well as a financial consultation and a loan of up to $30,000 so they can use that um, for, to pay for the cost um, associated with getting their credentials recognized in Manitoba and get back to their field of expertise. So their potentials are being used in the right path as well as it helps for the prosperity of Canada down the road. Perfect. So if you are an experienced professional in your home country, don't lose this opportunity. You must reach Sid Winnipeg. Now let's talk about the business program. Could you tell us more how Sid Winnipeg business program empower the um, entrepreneurs? Absolutely, Fernanda. First, let me tell you that we have a couple programs. We have a few uh, programs running during the year. Uh, and specifically, I would like to talk about two. Okay. One is Doing Business in Canada. is a program uh, in general uh, to help people to know general things 
about what is happening, how may I open a business in Canada, right? Okay. So it's a three hours workshop, and this specifically is going to help you to understand, okay, how long is going to take this? How long I need, uh, how much, uh, how many hours I need to invest on this business idea that I have? It's just a general thing. So we're supporting, giving you uh, just a path to start your business idea. And we have, okay. if you decide to go uh -huh. with the business idea after this uh, small workshop, we have a program who runs for six weeks uh -huh. and it's called IBES, we call it IBES because it's an immigrant business enterprise support and training program. This is totally different because we are gonna ask you to have a business idea is gonna be this time after COVID is gonna be in person. And what is the intention to do this training, Fernanda? Is to really give you all the tools, mm -hmm. regulation, understand the market, okay. understand the financial part of the business, understand the license permit that I need to uh, have in place to have this business running with all the regulation in place. So, okay. It's a great opportunity for people, as I told you, uh, I am a former participant, and for me, this program helped me to put all my ideas together. Because when I came, I was with a lot of motivation, a lot of energy, but I kept all my ideas around. And I didn't have an idea or like a, a plan. Uh -huh. So this program helped me really to have a plan okay. and to put that idea those ideas into an action list. So that is how SEED supports uh, through the programs that we have. What is the main focus of the program recognition counts and what's the maximum loan that the recognition program can provide? That is a great question again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fernando. So the main focus is again, providing financial um, support for skilled immigrants, internationally trained professionals um, who have some sort of um, uh, credential from outside Canada and they wanted to get a job in that field. Um, or even if they are, um, we can get into the eligibility later possibly. But for now that even if they are Canadians and they have uh, experience outside Canada and they would like to get uh, um, start working in that field, they can receive all the support. Um, and we provide up to loan of maximum of $30,000. So usually this $30,000, it's a, it's a big number, uh -huh. you know, not every participant uh, needs that much. Like uh, the average amount is around $9,000 that they uh, receive, but if they need it, because like they're, they, they require more exams and courses and stuff, it's always available for them mm -hmm. uh, to receive. Mm -hmm. um, Go ahead. To Do they need to repay this loan? Yeah, and how? So um, the program is set in a way that um, you have to have a um, set career action plan or you have to have a plan for your studies, your exams, and you have to finish everything within two and a half years. Okay. So um, get your credentials recognized, know your pathways, and within this two and a half years, you have to cover everything because during this two and a half years, you um, the payment actually has two phases. The phrase, first phase is only interest payments. Okay. So when they are studying, because it's a lot to take care of because they have to focus on their studies, um, so they only have to pay the interest. Um, but after two and a half years, the goal is that they will be able to have that um, credentials recognized and have a job that they wanted to get into where their income is much higher. That's where they start doing the repayment, the payment of principal as well as the interest, which they can take it between um, as long as five years. Within five years, and they can pay everything back. Five years. How can individuals get involved in Seed Winnipeg's business program? What's the first step? The first step is go through our website, mm 
Okay. And we always have links where you have to fill the form. Okay. It is important to mention that right now, for example, we have the Doing Business in Canada for September 5th and our best info sessions for September 11th and September 18th. So you have to choose, fill the form. After that, in, in, in the case of the program, um, you need to participate in an info session. Why? In this info session, we explain how the program is. Uh -huh. It's not a common program, as I mentioned it. They, it, it has uh, three phases. One is the training, that uh -huh. is six weeks, Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday, okay. for two hours in person in our location, 80 Salter Street in the north uh, end of the city. And that is the first uh, phase. The second phase, that is the nice part, is the one-to-one -one consulting. Uh -huh. And is go it goes from up to six months. That means that after the training, we don't just leave you. We just go with you and get the name. We open the business with you. We make a, we create a plan. We start talking and helping you to to talk with your suppliers. We, if you need to get a, a a loan, we are going to help you to create the business plan to ask for the loan. Mm -hmm. And once you launch your business, we hope, in general terms, between six months to one year, we are going to help you also to do the third part of our program that is called aftercare huh? what that means means like we are gonna go again with you with a bi-weekly meetings by zoom and we help you to do the bookkeeping uh, explaining you about the taxes because it's a never end right yeah the business life is a continue learning you the regulations change your business change. Sometimes the business idea have to pivot because you notice that it's not worthy for you. So, and things happen, right? Yeah. So every, every, when you decide to be a business person, you need to be open always to be learning and, and continually improving yourself. So that's why we don't want to leave our participants just alone after the train. Right. We help you up to one year during this process. And I think that is the key success for this program. Perfect. Yeah, and if you're, if you're looking to start your business here in Canada, go and reach says Winnipeg because maybe creating a business in your country is different than Canada. Okay, let's go with the next question. This question is for you, but ladies, what's the eligible criteria? for both of these programs. Great. So for the eligibility, as we say, we will touch base um, as you got to be a permanent resident okay. or you are eligible if you would like, if you're a Canadian citizen. Okay. Uh, of course, any of these um, individuals I'm talking, you have to have some sort of um, credentials or experience outside Canada no. in order to get it recognized and be would like to work in that field and in, in, in the, your new community in Canada. Um, if you have a refugee status, you're also eligible to apply. Okay. Um, if you are, um, you have a work permit, you are eligible to apply for it. That includes QLIT visa holders. But keep in mind that uh, the work permit has to be um, long enough that you are able to s finish all your studies and getting your credentials recognized within all this time. Right. Um, and of course, like uh, Priscilla was uh, mentioning how about the aftercare with the business program mm -hmm. there. I wanted to touch base on that as well. That see, uh, we are there because we have a touch of um, sense of it. we are a community because um, it's understandable coming into a community where it's new, trying to settle down, try to figure out, try to learn the, sometimes the language if we have not already been able to be um, able to um, converse in, in English. So of course there's a lot of um, ups and downs with it in order to settle down. Um, so having a community, having an organization like C2 really helps and supports and thriving with 
where we wanted to go. We have had clients in the past um, who um, mentioned their stories that how hard it has been for them to come this far. Um, I had one uh, participant uh, um, during my training that mm-hmm. I observed my loan coordinator there, and he mentioned how uh, they were, when first moved into Canada, they were a nurse back home. And when they came in, they start picking worms uh-huh. for certain reason, and that's how he got paid. And it was very, very challenging because they had a huge amount of experience back here as a nurse, and now they are in here picking worms. That's very frustrating. And the other um, the frustration is that when there is not much of awareness about the program such as SEED provides, and then the individual goes around and around trying to figure out what to do on their own. Hello. We have had a participant in the past who, um, Thankfully, he became a lawyer last year, and that's where he wanted to be. But unfortunately, he wasn't aware that he can get his law degree recognized in Canada on him. So when he moved in, he started doing university from zero. So he got another bachelor's of art degree in criminal justice after three years. And then I was like, okay, now that I did university, I can get a job in my field of expertise. But unfortunately, he couldn't. And he couldn't get the job he really wanted it. And that's where he found out from when he was trying to apply for jobs and said that, oh, actually, I can get my own credentials recognized and I can become a lawyer. Okay. And But by that time, he spent all of the money on getting the Bachelor's of Art degree in criminal justice, unfortunately. So he need to get a job in order to get his credentials recognized. And that's the process when he was looking for another job someone who was past participant of seed when I pick at recognition counts, they told him that, why don't you go to recognition, uh, seat when I pick and get a recognition counselor and just get your credentials recognized and get a job. So mm-hmm. this having conversation, having a, the opportunity to raise awareness is actually is a, a very powerful thing because if he would have known about this, he wouldn't have gone through a very a, a, a circle roof and go very long uh, way in order to get his credentials recognized. And has took him many years, more than it should have, in order to get where he wanted to be. So we are here not only for today, but for their path. So we do Jeff, who is the financial uh, uh, the loan coordinator, he will be on their path down the road whenever they need the support, the help. Um, always available to um, have a conversation and meeting and figure out ways to um, help them succeed. Does it apply for every kind of lawyer? Because, for example, there is the, the Greek one or the England one, right? So in Canada, we well, use have a credential outside Canada. It okay. applies to everyone. Okay. Plus credential or certain experience that needs to be recognized in Canada. So your, um, and, of course, like the other eligibilities I mentioned, more than welcome to apply. And even if someone says like, mm, I'm not sure if I'm eligible or not, uh-huh. it's totally okay. Reach out to us. We're more than happy to set up a meeting and discuss further. Maybe loan is not the best option. We have other options. I right. always uh, teach our, uh, or pass this information to our participants. And actually what we do, we do two information sessions per month. One is during the business hours, the other one during the evening to just be flexible for the community members. Um, and in that, we always mention, loan shouldn't be your first stop. You should be exhausting other opportunities and options that's out there that's like funding, scholarships, grants. There are many out there. <laughs> if you haven't exhausted them, we will refer them. We provide all the resources, documents we have created. We pass it to the individual. I'm like, contact this, contact this, contact this. Mm-hmm. If they say you are not eligible to any of those grants, then come back to us. And we're more than happy to take. And of course, we will stay in touch with the person to take care of them at that moment, future, and whenever they need help. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. How about the eligible criteria for the business program? Uh, as I told you, we have two right now running for uh, this this year. Mm-hmm. Doing business in Canada, the workshop is just we need uh, PR uh, and create visa holders. Okay. 
and of course our uh, residents of Manitoba because all the regulation that we are going to review together is going to be just here in Manitoba. And for the IBEST program, mm -hmm. we are going to ask you for the PPRs and could be stakeholders, residents of Manitoba, have a business idea. It's really important. Have a very clear business idea because the program, the training is going to be based on that. We are going to work in your business idea, uh, skills or experience about the business idea. Yeah, because uh, some people say, so I would like to open a restaurant. Do you know how to cook? Do you know how to manage a restaurant? Do you know how to? No, I don't. So the learning curve is going to be so high and it's going to be really difficult. I don't want to say that it's impossible, but we want to push people to do and success. So skills and experience. And the last, but very important, uh -huh. we ask you to have a low income. We have a chart in our okay. website where you can check. Uh -huh. You have to um, get the household, how many people you have in your house. Uh -huh. And uh, according with the household income, go to the chart. Why? People ask me, why, Priscilla, you guys always help to low income people? Because our programs are, all our programs are free. Yeah. And we want to offer the service to the people who need it the most. Exactly. And we want to be very specific. We want, we have participants who are facing really and struggling in, in their financials. So we want to be there to support them. And we don't want to get that spot for someone who probably can reach another organization. Anyways, you can go through our website, apply, and we are going to help you because as uh, Farana says, we have a document that if you are not eligible for these programs, we are going to support you, giving you information about another organizations who can help them. Perfect. So this applies also for citizens, no? We, uh, right now, we don't have anything uh, open for citizens because right now we are just uh, running uh, or business in Canada. Uh -huh. uh, but is coming for a, a spring on 2024. We open our program BEST. Okay. It's not immigrant, it's just BEST. best. And that is open for everyone. For but everyone. this fall and winter, okay. we are gonna have just I BEST that is for immigrants. So only for immigrants. And that's how SEEDS Winnipeg is supporting people to avoid the poverty in this country. So let's continue with the next question. He, uh, what opinions are available for the interest rate of the loan? Interest rate of the loans. Um, so we do have, um, we have provided um, both options of variable rate as well as fixed rate. Mm -hmm. um, and it is prime plus one person. It is okay. quite competitive. So um, if I give you a little bit of another information that uh, is very crucial regarding um, Recognition Council Loan is that Recognition Council Loan is a character-based loan. That's a very key word in here. Okay. That's what makes Recognition Council Loan different from any other loan out there. And the reason is that our tradition loan, that, uh, if we would like to receive it from the f any financial institutions, there are a lot of criteria we have to follow, uh, we have to have. You have to have a credit history, you have to have a very good credit score, you have to have employment or a steady income, and many more on top of that. Okay. But we are not looking on those things because we do understand, as Priscilla mentioned, that we support, help low income individuals and families. So we are there to help those who are facing barriers. So we are not looking for any sort of credit history, steady income, because let's say an, an internationally trained profession comes to Canada. Once they enter, they haven't built any sort of credit history or credit score because they haven't had any sort of credit or debt. So they are still eligible and they, we are still there to help them out. And our partner, uh, financial institution partner, is Assiniboine Credit Union, actually Assiniboine Credit Union. What seed one effect, they started like uh, launch recognition counts in 2012, um, where they came up with all the terms and conditions. So whatever prime is, 
of us to one person. So once we build a relationship with the uh, participant, get to know them in person, learn a lot, and once we see the recognition counseling is the best option for them, we refer them to a center point credit union, and that's where they provide all the information. But uh, Jeff also provides them this um, flexibility of, hey, you have a variable where the uh, rate can change based on the what is the prime rate, um, and that's it's either plus or da uh, downside because it could be a plus when the prime rate goes down, your rate payment, your rate is going to go down and your payment is gonna go down. But if let's say the prime goes up, then your payment is gonna increase as well. So there is a like a uh, risk with that, but with the fixed rate, as soon as the participant choose the fixed rate, whatever prime is at that moment, that will be locked. And, and then the payment and everything will be based on that. Mm -hmm. Is there any fee associated with this program? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. That's a great question, then, Fernando. There is no fee associated with um, applying for recognition counseling. As uh, Priscilla mentioned, again, I'm going to emphasize, we are a nonprofit organization. We are there to help community members prosper and thrive in their financial, well, uh, provide them with, um, advice and support for their financial well-being. Um, so uh, even with Assiniboine Credit Union, that you have to receive a uh, purchase a $5 fee membership because mm -hmm. a point credit union is a local um, uh, financial institution. It's very different from other banks. They also waive that $5 uh, membership fee. So let's say a um, participant received this loan today and luckily they won, uh, they win a lottery in a week time. They would like to, oh, I would like to pay everything right in a week. They can pay it down. Like there's no penalty with the, all the payments. Okay, no fees associated. No fees associated. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So for those interested in join to the program or applying, what advice or encouragement would you like to offer about the business program? Ah, I would like to say, and um, because I have the experience as a former participant to have a very good business idea related with your life. Yeah. And some of our participants comes with an extraordinary business idea, but it doesn't fit in their lives. Right. With the, the moment that they are living and their financial situation and conditions. So find a very good idea. It could be challenge. Yeah. Uh, it could be a challenge because it requires that you have a skills, experience, that you understand what you can do, how many hours you can invest in this business idea, right? Because, uh, and, and this is sunny, because a lot of people says, oh, I want to open a business because I want to have free time. And I said, okay, <laughs> that is a really bad decision <laughs> because if you open your own business, you won't have free time. <laughs> That's you right. After normal hours, you have to still working in your business and in growing your business, website, uh, suppliers, payments. So it means that you need to invest a lot. Mm -hmm. But that's why to have a good business idea for you right. is a good advice because it's, it, it's something that you like mm -hmm. and you have a passion and you are motivated for that. It's going to be easy. It's going to be a fun time that you are investing in something that really makes you happy. Mm -hmm. So that is my best advice. Choose a business idea who fits in your life and you really, really have passion and you are motivated and gives you that happiness that you are looking for. Perfect. So sit down for a moment, take a pen and paper, start writing your ideas, your business ideas and contact Seeds Winnipeg to, <laughs> to figure out if you're going to be able to make it through one of them, right? Awesome. Now, are there any restrictions or exceptions for, it, for the eligibility of the program? There is uh, no restrictions, of okay. course. Anyone is welcome to, um, if they would like to re receive the information, more than happy 
Uh -huh. With the eligibility, as I mentioned, permanent residents, right. um, those um, who are even uh, like Canadian citizens who were born in here, okay. um, refugee status, they have to, and QIT visa holders, they have to have a work permit. Okay. Um, and long enough to be able to finish their studies within that period of time in two and a half years, within two and a half years. Um, so the only thing, restriction I would say is that your plans um, to get your credentials recognized has to end within two and a half years. Okay. So uh, if, let's say, we have individuals who come and they're like, actually, uh, my studies finish in three or four years, we can definitely process their application once it's two and a half years less. Okay. So, but for those many, uh, like the time frame that they need to cover, we uh, definitely provide them with other resources and hopefully they will find those self-managed supports. But on the other side, they have to have found their plans set for two and a half and they have to have a, a career plan that's achievable and realistic. Okay. It makes sense. And that's why we are very grateful of all our partner agencies, such as Manitoba Start or Success Skill Center or um, Osborne Valley Resources, because they have career coaches. And they sit down, they talk with the participants and see what makes sense. And they uh, write down all the dates as well. They plan it out down the road, whatever like long time it will take. And they see, is this really realistic? Is there any backup plan in case something happens? Because we're all humans. Something That's happens, right. an emergency yeah. happened. Who knew COVID is gonna happen? No one knew. All right. So all these things happen, they have to have a backup plan. Okay. And my colleague, Jeff, I like saying that to everywhere. He always says that a uh, plan for the worst, um, and uh, uh, but even if it didn't happen, you're so like- um, You're safe. Sing. Um, and um, so, yeah, there's uh, all those, uh, uh, the eligibility criteria that they have to look into and that uh, um, have to have a, a, a realistic career action plan and everything there. Had ever happened that, for example, a newcomer with a work permit applies for this uh, recognition program and gets the loan, but then they find out that they are not happy here? Do they sign a contract? So what, what happened? And as a newcomer, when we are in here, we never know what we are getting ourselves into. That's right. New place, will we feel included? Will we feel belong there? Can I thrive in that community? Um, but the work permit aspect, it just started because we recently signed a new agreement with ESDC. Um, and thankfully they get provided enough grants so we can now uh, carry our service for another five years. Oh. And that's where we were able to include the work permit aspect there. Okay. So far we haven't, I don't believe that there has been anyone from work permit, okay. but there might have been individuals in the past because our repayment re uh, percentage is 93%. It is a very high percentage for a character-based loan where we are not requiring a lot of criteria that a traditional banks like loans, they are uh, required, um, but we still have 7% who weren't able to pay it back. Um, so they need a guarantor? No, they no. don't need a guarantor. Okay. That's where like Jeff comes into place as well as like Assiniboine Credit Union, they yeah. sit down. We are always working on helping clients to take care of the worst situation that you have said. Uh -huh. The worst situ situation, so they don't get to that point. Hopefully they don't get to a situation where they feel, oh, I cannot pay this. Because the, the plan is you sit down with your career coach, with our partner agencies, okay. you plan it out, and after two and a half years, you get the job you wanted with a higher end cut where you don't feel like trapped the whole grid during payments we got it so ladies you are really professionals you're basically teaching people how to create a business or how to get the credentials here in canada would you like to tell me a successful story about one of your clients 
Oh, and yes. So. I have many. I okay. have many. Just <laughs> one, please. <laughs> Just one. Yes, I would like to talk about uh, the food industry. Oh. It's amazing. A lot of people says, oh, it's so hard to have a food business because you have a lot of regulations. Yeah. And a lot of people come saying, hey, I would like to bring these dishes because my community is growing and I don't find uh, this food locally. And so let me tell you that in the past two years, we have opened and launched so many food uh, businesses uh, where they have the food handler certificate, they have the commercial kitchen, they have to rent a commercial kitchen and they have the permits from the uh, health inspector and they are open to have their website they sell frozen products and they sell cooked products they uh and they have been uh, really successful uh, i have uh, so many names but the one that comes to my mind is marcela galindo uh, from um uh, Emparepas is the name of the business, uh -huh. and she's from Colombia. She does arepas and empanadas, oh, wow. and she is very successful because she has two different places, stores where she can sell, mm -hmm. and she has a wonderful website where people can ask a bite from there, and she drop or she just deliver the products in their homes. So yeah, we have a, 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 a very good uh, rate of success, and but. As I told you at the beginning, is our goal is not just to open the business. It's ensure that that business is going to improve your life, is going to fit in your life and your conditions. And sometimes after the training, the participants decided that probably the business is not right for them. <laughs> and we count that that is a success also. Yeah. Because you don't want to invest time and money in something that is not for you. Exactly. So. I think that is a success story also. So I, I'm happy to share that with uh, with you and your audience. Beautiful. How about me? Bernadette? Yeah, that's it. If I, if I could uh, add another one, which I already um, shared with yeah. him, success mm -hmm. story there that um, he met, he was from Sri, uh, he's from Sri Lanka okay. actually, and he actually did give us a consent to share his success story. And uh, um, we have many other, we have like, almost 500 loans that we have approved for our past participants and over around three and a half million dollars that we have provided the loans to our past participants. So all the success stories, I have almost 500 success stories out there. And um, we have a few videos on uh, Seed Winnipeg uh, website that if you're interested in learn more how to actually hear it from their own voice, why, what kind of impact we are actually having. Of course, like I as an employee say, I understand the aspect of like um, the importance of this program. That's why I'm working in here, but uh, hearing it from a participant who actually went through it, that, that means a lot more. And seeing them saying that, oh, it was not only about the providing me the loan to cover all my costs and was a the sense of support that I have a shoulder to rely on. Oh, yeah. The emotional aspect, knowing the seats, um, mm -hmm. employees there as a friend and who really cares for me, my well-being, my financial well-being, it really matters a lot. <laughs> um, You're right. We have many of like success stories like that, um, but I will leave it there for uh, your audience to please, please go to our seat one of my website and watch those stories on our website because we have it uploaded, we have them uploaded there. Perfect, and lastly, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience? Any suggestions? Seed Winnipeg has been in, in Winnipeg uh, for 30 years. And uh, the main part of our mission and our vision is to support a local community to really improve their lives, as I said, and go behind the business training, regulations, recognitions, loans. Everything is the superficial thing. Mm -hmm. Behind that is your life, your family, how you can improve yourself, your career, your income. So we are focused to try to get that as part of our work. So please say, uh, I'm proud to work in Seed Winnipeg. It's a, 
even if I am really busy in my own business, I decided to be part of these organizations because it gives me a lot of um, satisfaction. And I learn also with my participants okay. because they have a lot of experience around the world okay. uh, about businesses and they are experts in their fields. So learning, continuously learning is part of our life. Awesome. Great. And if I add something, um, I do want to say that I myself am a refugee as well. So I totally understand the feeling we all go through when we are trying to settle down in a new home and call a place a home. It comes a lot with it and what we leave behind and with what we start, it takes a lot. And having organizations and communities such as Steed and many other agencies that's out there to really make uh, uh, an effort to help out, um, it's very important to use those advantages and reach out. Um, and now if you are, if any of your audience are like right now and watching as they have this power, they have this knowledge because they know about what programs are out there. So I, I would highly appreciate if they do this favor for okay. us to spread this awareness, let them know that there's a recognition council on out there for internationally for trained professionals. There's a business program at Seed Winnipeg and there are other programs at Seed Winnipeg that can also help out if none of these are something that resonates with them or it anything else that they have regards to financial empowerment. Um, and I wanted to thank our uh, funders for sure, for being able to continue, continuously doing this great work for our communities, um, as well as our partner agencies who are always keeping us on our toes and referring clients and participants to us. And I wanted to know, let you all know that uh, we do have a monthly half an hour uh, every first Wednesday of the month from 12 to 12.30, a discussion series that we discuss about financial literacy topics in a very easy way to understand. Um, and any suggestion, feedbacks, comments, or recommendation regarding what topic they would like us to cover, let, us, let me know. I would be more than happy to uh, create that and do join us via Seed Winnipeg Facebook. Okay, perfect. So I have one more, my last question I will say. Is there any challenge with the people that doesn't speak it? People don't speak English, I mean, they need like a level four, level three of English, or you have different language with these programs or interpreters, how that works? So with recognition counts because they are trying to get as their professions because they are on regulated professions um, and regulated professions are like nurses, pharmacists, doctors, uh, non-regulated like um, computer science as uh, software engineers um, or trade professions like plumbers, um, chefs, all these. Uh, in order to get those certificates or credentials recognized, unfortunately, they have to have good enough English in order to be able to get this credentials uh, recognized. I know, like a doctor, they have to have enough English to be able to take right. care of the patient, which totally makes sense. Absolutely. So we are not uh, closing our doors on anyone whose English is not um, at the level that they would like it to be or the uh, level of work. But um, again, those who um, are in a position where they are like, okay, I, uh, my English is not good enough. I want to wait until my English is good enough. Right. We do have assessment loan. We mm -hmm. provide up to 30,000 loan that they can use it in order to work on their English oh. and to getting their credentials recognized and okay. settle oh. down the road uh, that helps them succeed. All right. In our case, Fernanda, we ask uh, the participants to have uh, English level enough to understand the training okay. and enough to communicate and do all their work that the, the homework or the assignments that they have to develop during the training. Okay. But something that goes behind all that, I always said that when you are opening your business, the best salesperson of your business is yourself. Right. So if we are living in Winnipeg, we need to speak English. All right. That means that if you don't have 
a very high level, it doesn't mean that you cannot start. You can start, but one of your action list in your to-do list is practice your English. For sure. And uh, I don't know, I, I want to talk about myself. Yeah. To get that confidence to go out and talk in English as a second or third language is very hard. Me too. It's because we have an accent. We have, sometimes we don't find the specific words, but the most important is to be able to communicate. So it's two, two different things. For our training, have a minimum, I would like to say a CLV of uh, five. Mm -hmm. But when you open your business, you will need to put in your to-do list, improve that English, so you are gonna be able to get more customers and communicate with your employees, customers, and your suppliers. But it's a path. Don't stress yourself. Don't get that overwhelming. For that reason, you can start all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching us today. We all are immigrants in this country, or the most part of the population. We have a lot of groups and communities. <laughs> First, just don't go to your community to practice your language. Go out and discover the Canadian world, the Winnipeg. Talk to more people. Practice your English. If you want to start a business, if you're a skilled professional, go ahead. You can do it. And thank you so much for watching the Your Multicultural Channel Community Hour today. Don't forget to follow uh, oh, Sid Winnipeg. Uh, how they can follow you? Uh, you can follow us through our Facebook or our website is always there and we do have Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. And don't forget to follow the You Multicultural channel and YouTube, Facebook, all the social media including Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.